Hi everyone. Today we're going to return to our series building a PLC program that you can be proud of. Now this will be part five. Now in the other um, parts of the, um, the series, in part one we looked at writing PLC programs to control a traffic light using discrete bits and then using time sequence using indirect addressing. In part two, we used indirect addressing for inputs as well as outputs to control the sequence for air cylinders in the program. And in part three and four, we returned to the traffic light application and expanded the program significantly. We looked at sequencing of operation using input, output, and mass tables. Today, um, what we're going to do is use sequencing, but we're going to add to the sequence each time um, we uh, complete a round and we're going to follow that sequence through. So when I was young we used to play this game called Simon. It was a electronic game by Milton Bradley and so we're going to reproduce that Simon game using the Automation Direct uh, simulation with the advanced HMI uh, unit. So how Simon works is that it has four colored buttons and we have green, red, yellow, and blue. And a round in the game consists of the device lighting up one of these buttons. And after which then the player must then hit that same button. As And then what happens is it lights up now the second round, which would be, say, two of these buttons in random order. And then the player represents that and it goes on to the third round. You'll see here on my screen, I have my HMI. This is the design of the game. We have added a high, highest level that we've achieved, a level, the current level that we're on, a reset and a start button. And then we have our four buttons. And we're using Modbus. So the first thing to do is to program this all in your HMI. And if we look at our Modbus settings here, our address, then our polling rate, this is the polling rate to communicate. Now that's been reduced so that we can account for some of the sounds that we're going to have in our HMI. And then we have our port address. So that those things are the need to be set. Then if we look at um, each individual uh, color, like our green, it's a pilot light. And here we set our Modbus communication, which is the same as here. We have our address, which is 1. And we have our value that we're actually sending back to the PLC, which is address uh, 10001. So if I actually click on the green itself, um, which the operator would do, you can see here the console actually beeps. And that's how we get the sounds. So it, right now, it's the, uh, the console is going to beep for a frequency of 415 uh, hertz at 420 milliseconds, so about half a second. So that'll give us our tone for that color, which is the green. The other thing that actually is happening is when we need to play something, we have to use what they call data describer one. And what happens is it will read that value in the uh, PLC or from the PLC and then determine what to do with that information. So if we look at uh, Data Scriber, we can see here that we're actually going to read a value. And if it's one, then we're going to play green. If it's two, red, four, yellow, eight, blue, ten, we're going to play like a losing sound. And then we'll play like a winning sound if it's 20. And the winning sound is like, uh, we're going to use that when it actually turns off the unit. Okay, so that's about it for uh, the advanced HMI and, and all the parameters that we need. Then if we look at the PLC program, what we'll uh, see is our first scan flag will actually move one into uh, MHR0, which is just a, a work register. And what that allows us to do is then we will rotate the register through all 16 bits. 
and when it gets to the fourth bit we're going to turn on zero again and this does this automatically as quickly as possible through the scan so that creates our random um, color for a random bit which would then represent our color from green to blue then the next part of the program what we do is we actually use a mask and we actually mask out um, the rest of the bits in that channel and we actually put that into uh, HMHR4 which actually gives us only the first four bits of that word and a random sequence of or random color that we're going to fire off. Then what we do is we start the game, we set all of our pointers, then what we do is we uh, delay a little bit so that we can hear uh, what the uh, what our playback is going to be and then what we do is we play the sequence and once we play the sequence we actually look for an input so we set all these inputs or we play the sequence we set all these outputs here so that our sequence can be played then what we do is we then look for our input pattern and we compare our input pattern to our predetermined pattern and then we move our pointers like we did in our previous programs. And then we allow a delay at the end of the game or at the end of the level in order to add to the next level and play again. And here we determine the high score or highest level achieved and if it's greater than the more current one it moves it in. Next what we do is we say after 45 seconds if no one hits any keys then we reset the game. So that's what that on delay time is. We have 45 seconds there and once the 45 second delay time is hit then we reset it. Then what we have is, if the game bit is off for more than 500 milliseconds, the sound will be reset. So basically that sound channel that we have, um, which is MHR2, we actually basically zero it out so that we hear, hear no sound. So putting it all together, um, we can actually call up our unit here. You can see here our highest level is 23, our level currently is 1. So if we start the game, it will actually flash here the red. We hit red. Now we have the next level. Red, green. Then we go red, green, yellow. So I'm just following the pattern that it's setting out for me. When we hit something incorrect, then it sounds a losing sound and then sets the level and now that's, it just stays that, that way. And if we want to start again, we just hit reset, go ahead. So this actually teaches us a lot about bit manipulation and sequencing. Thanks for watching. And if you have any further questions, if you go to our website, um, the whole program is laid out with all the timers and all the sequencing so you can for further study. Thank you.